Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. Here we go. So I'm going to give you an overview of uh, who is HID Global first before going directly in, on, uh, in the heart of the subject. So HID is part of ASA Abloy. ASA Abloy is a global leader in more opening solutions. It is a 9.8 billion US dollar company based in Stockholm, uh, Sutton. And uh, there is uh, 46,000 employees who are, who are right working for ASA Abloy. So HID is a provider of trusted identities for people, places, but also things. And uh, we are split in six business areas covering nine markets. So we have entertainment, agriculture, utilities, education, uh, transportation, enterprise, healthcare, finance, and government. Okay. When I say government, that includes civil government, defense, and criminal justice. So, uh, I'm working for the citizen identity business area. Okay, that is uh, covering all the things about, uh, as I said, government uh, request. So we are market leader since uh, for 15 years now. We have a, a global presence over, around the world, 45, more than 35 offices. And if we are just uh, talking about uh, specifically about this business area, uh, we have uh, 550 people working uh, worldwide for this business area. So as you can see here, we are located almost everywhere around the world. And we have eight manufacturing sites two in Germany, two in the US, USA. Uh, one is in Austin, Texas, that is also our headquarter. One in Malaysia, Johor, Indonesia, Surabaya, Thailand, Gore. And we have also another one in Malta at the Valletta. Uh, as I said, we are a provider of com uh, complete, uh, complete solution. So this means we can provide end-to-end -end solution starting from the enrollment to the insurance. Uh, so this means we can sell the complete package to, uh, to a government entity. But we can also provide, uh, when needed, some part of the solution that, that include ID document, uh, perform machine, reader, software system, operating system. So we are flexible enough to, to integrate all the pieces of uh, all our product inside uh, a dedicated solution for a customer, uh, depending what is the need. So we are very close to our customer. So we are listening what we are, that, that we want, and we created a complete solution matching with their need. Uh, we are working also on the biometric hardware, and uh, we are able also to offer some uh, virtual ID coming, uh, and also mobile ID, all the things that can enhance the, the customer experience. But today, we are here to more discuss about what we can do with laser in the ID world. You saw in the previous presentation from Christoph uh, that uh, the polycarbonate today is uh, what is requested by the ID market. And, uh, and because of that, laser is really uh, a key feature, a, a key component of the personalization. Uh, because having a secure and durable personalization is a must today. And, uh, and because you will see that later on uh, inside this presentation uh, is why laser personalization personalization versus printing uh, became a standard in this ID industry. As you can see on the right, on the image, if you take a polycarbonate document, a lot of his security features have been created uh, by, uh, by a laser. 
So Nipun, I'll let you maybe explain in, uh, why we are using laser and uh, which security features are using this, uh, this technology. So thank you, Stefan, for the introduction um, of the company to the audience. Um, so in the next few slides, we will discuss about uh, why laser technology matter in the ID industry. Um, a comparison to the surface technologies that are there in the market. Uh, and then the presentation is more focused uh, on the laser matter interaction uh, in the market and how we can combine this laser technology with other features. Um, and especially inks um, that are embedded inside the polycarbonate product. Uh, and, and then a few examples and followed by um, a conclusion and takeaway. So next slide. So if you compare um, the laser technology with the surface technology, um, so inkjet printing, um, as you have uh, known and you have, you must have possessed some print ink, inkjet printed cards, uh, these are performed on the surfaces, so not embedded inside the polycarbonate, but on the surfaces. So to protect these inkjet, um, you must apply a protective layer on the top of the inkjet. So because uh, everything is done on the surface, it's it's much more uh, fragile, and you can destroy the destroy the polycarbonate uh, surface. So to do so, you apply a protective layer on the top of the inkjet. So such technologies are less durable and less secure. Now, the question arises, how can you change this? So what we do is that we take the polycarbonate uh, and we laser and engrave it. On the left-hand side, you will see a data page. So this data page is uh, embedded or included inside your passport. And it's, it's kind of key feature that shows all your details. And you can engrave your image, your, your database inside uh, this data, uh, data page with lasers. And on the right hand side, if you see, you see a cross section of this data page, which shows different layers of polycarbonate. Now, the pursuit depth or the carboning or the blackening reaches around 0.13 millimeter inside the polycarbonate. So you're not onto the surface, but you are embedded inside the polycarbonate. So this is quite important because if someone needs to forge the document, he cannot or it will be difficult for him to forge the document. On the other hand, if someone wants to forge this document, he has to use a fine grinding paper. So he will, he will apply a fine grinding paper on this photo and he will paste another photo and kind of use liquid plastics to apply over the top. But this can be countered on the fact if you place a, another security feature on the top of the print. So if someone removes the photo, he removes also the security feature that is printed over the photo. Next slide, please. The other uh, uh, quite important features um, that lasers does to the polycarbonate is blistering. So here you can see that when you use lasers on polycarbonate, you actually blisters the surface. So this is actually advantageous when you compare to the inkjet, because if you make a black image 45 using inkjet, you won't see the blistering on the edges. On the other hand, if you use the lasers on the polycarbonate, on the zoom image especially on your uh, right hand side, you see that you can see blistering done by lasers. So an officer, a passport officer uh, at the airport can see that this document was performed using a laser and not inkjet. Next slide, please. And another important, quite important uh, challenge of using such laser uh, personalization on polycarbonate is that when a laser uh, is used to uh, engrave images throughout uh, a complete facial features, because you know that nowadays uh, in a country, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, an era of uh, migration and people migrate from one place to another. So you have different facial features. Now, when you are at the production site, uh, you have to take care that you use a single laser machine with a single laser parameter to actually engrave all the facial features starting from light to darker tones. So this becomes quite difficult because 
all the or most of the lasers have weakness here because either if you print a lighter tone, the darker tone that you see here is too dark so that you don't see an image. Or if you print a darker tone in a nice manner, the lighter tone is too light. So to enhance this, uh, one can use improved Playtone uh, softwares where one can actually average the data points or grayscale points and you can actually achieve a nice um, gray tones. Even if the laser has some weakness, you can apply some softwares to enhance this. Next slide, please. An important problem uh, that occurs with the uh, IV industry is the problem of the fake documents. Because if you go to an airport, an airport officer just take 10 seconds or 15 seconds to scan your document. And you will be, you will be eager to know that 50% of all fake documents use lookalikes. So the example is on your uh, right, uh, right hand side where you see that there, there is a person who looks like Obama. So it's rather simple for a fraudulent but an efficient method to equip the wrong person with a genuine document. So how the problem of fake documents can be evolved? This can be encountered with the high quality pictures using lasers. So the typical resolution today um, that is asked is around 400 DPI, but a laser can actually give you much more better resolution image. So higher the resolution image you have on your polycarbonate surface, the less chances you have that a fake document can be produced. Next slide, please. On the other hand, um, it's quite important, uh, as I told you, that uh, a forger can come, uh, can remove your photo from your data page using a fine grinding paper and put another photo and apply a kind of liquid plastic. Uh, so how can it be countered? It can be countered in such a way that you put an invisible print running across the photo, which can be seen on your right hand side under a UV light. So under, under a normal white, uh, light, uh, white light illumination, you see that you don't see any print, but if a passport office, officer sees the document under UV light for 10 seconds or five seconds, he sees that uh, the UV print is absorbed on the, on the facial feature. So if a fraudster actually fraudges the document and change the image on your left-hand side, he will also remove the, the print on the surface that is on the top of the image. So these are quite important ways where you can mix laser engraving with other print runs and which in turn give you nice security features. Next slide, please. The other method uh, that is quite interesting is mixing surface embossing and laser engraving. So what you see here is that the embossing can be designed in such a way that when a laser is included with the embossing methods, it focuses or defocuses the laser on the embossing part. So you can see that when the embossing is done, you can have or tend to have a black feature on the embossing part when the laser is engraved over that, or the embossing can be in such a way that you don't see a black part, just the embossing part or a white part. So in this manner, you're actually mixing surface embossing and laser engraving onto the polycarbonate surface to enhance the security um, feature of your document. Next slide, please. Now, uh, the question arises, how do you print the documents? So um, uh, the country needs two type of um, um, uh, laser equipments uh, that, is, that are divided into decentralized or centralized equipments. So decentralized equipments are small equipments uh, which, are, which are used for small offices such as um, uh, police stations or um, some small offices. But the centralized options are options for bigger production such as government scale where you, you have a tender which is coming for a government and a government wants to produce all the documents at a single site. So what you have is a centralized machine which prints your documents and add uh, several security features in the same go. Next slide, please. Now, quite interesting, as our colleagues from Thales also um, noted down, that perforation uh, is quite important uh, in the ID industry. Most of you have your passports, and on the passports, you must have seen that there are some serial numbers that are included inside your passport page. So these are not done by any needle method. These are actually done by lasers. 
So such lasers can actually use and make holes inside your passport pages so that an officer won't see that there are numbers on the page, but he would rather focus on the way these holes are made. So he will see that there are some conical holes that are made, and he will also try to find some residue of fumes which are generated using lasers. So if a fraudster wants to use or replicate the same method, he will either use lasers or he will either use needles. In case he use needles, it will be difficult to replicate the same numbers. On the other hand, the shape of the holes plays an extra additional uh, security layer uh, on, on the top of the perforation. Next slide, please. The other interesting uh, example of laser perf um, is uh, seen here. So what you do is that you make the holes so small that these holes are not being able to see under normal reflection. But if you see the document against light, you will see the image of the lady that is seen on the on your right hand side, similar to the image engraved on the document. So the holes that are made here are so small that you actually cannot forge them. On the other side, these holes are manufactured using lasers. So control laser technology, a control laser knowledge is needed to make exactly these kind of laser perf images on the polycarbonate documents. Next slide, please. An important feature of laser uh, personalization, which is shown here, is an HID Mirage feature, which is seen as a metallic feature on your polycarbonate substrate. Uh, can you click, please? Yeah. If you see against the white light, you see that you just see the watermark effect which is printed on the same uh, window. And when you, when you observe the um, watermark without the light, you see that you only see the watermark from the back, so with any lighting condition. So you have three conditions where in front of light, under reflection, you see the portrait of the image. And when you, when you see the documents against the light, you see the, the watermark effect. So you, you are actually hiding two images on, on a single place. And everything done here, except the watermark, is performed using a laser. Next slide, please. The other example of such laser personalization is the personalization of holograms by demetallizing using lasers. So what you are doing is that you can actually, um, as shown by our colleagues, you can actually engrave the holograms in such a way that the holograms are not damaged. So the holograms are punched over your uh, black and white image in such a way that when you engrave the black and white image, you also engrave the holograms, but you do not damage the holograms. So if a forger wants to damage your holograms or the black and white image, he, he, he would either damage the hologram or the black and white image. Next example. The other important slide uh, is quite uh, known, well known, are the optical memory. So the optical memory on the ID cards are the rectangular CD-ROM that can hold around seven uh, megabytes of information. So we can also engrave such optical memory using lasers and engrave our data, including the photo, the birthday, the signature on such optical memory. So while this optical memory holds the information uh, of your of your database, it also holds a physical information in in the name of the um, your your facial features, your your signature, your name, or your date of birth. Next slide, please. So, uh, quite interesting are the disadvantages of the lasers, which are not talked uh, in the market. So, the lasers are sometimes slow process because there are so many typical lasers uh, in the market in, in, in numbers of millions. Um, uh, it's quite important that each document must be printed with low cost. In general, a security feature, suppose a security, um, something like Mirage or the hologram or any security feature should cost around five to 20 cents per feature. So if you, if you, if you take um, all the costing uh, in terms of manpower production, a laser has just less than 10 seconds to engrave a single document if we look in the term of costing. Other slides, please. 
so a key takeaway uh, while considering lasers and materials and polycarbonate that lasers are present but also uh, are the future for the id industry the combination of lasers and material science nanotechnologies such as aims um, uh, inside the polycarbonate plays an important and vital role for the new security features so industry is moving towards the technology that can engrave or manufacture security features inside the document and not onto the surface. On the other hand, there have been uh, new technologies which are combining the laser technology and the inkjet together. Also, with some disadvantages, lasers till today holds an important and vital role in the IT industry. Thank you for your attention. Now, uh, you can ask questions to both of us. Thank you very much. Uh, so perhaps a, a first question from uh, Samit. Samit, a student from uh, PSR a Master. So Samit, do you have a question? Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, I have a question to Nipun. Good morning, Nipun. Thank you for such a nice presentation. Good morning. My question, uh, my question is, uh, you mentioned about the lasers in your slide. So could you please tell me which type of lasers you use for different purposes, like for uh, laser engraving and for making codes, which type of lasers you use? Um, so right now, the lasers which are quite important in the ID industry are the fiber laser, uh, summit. So usually we use nanosecond laser uh, uh, with the wavelength around 1000 nanometer, 1050 nanometer, uh, which, are, which are compiled uh, to, the, to the polycarbonate industry. And uh, uh, my next question is that uh, like we, uh, we do not have a unification about the security features uh, for our passports or other documents, like we can encrypt some best features in France, but if we go to some other country, they may they may not have uh, the equipment to retrieve or to check those security features. So uh, how you deal with this problem? Like, uh, are you working on the unification of the security features around the globe? So yes, uh, with, with um, as you know, that it, there is a huge uh, discrepancy uh, when considering developed nations and underdeveloped nations or state developing nations. So there can be a possibility that uh, in, in few of the uh, still developing nations, uh, you don't have uh, the technologies. So what we do is that we, if if um, if a government comes to us, uh, we provide tend to provide a complete solution. So not not just the we just provide the security features, but also we provide the readers to to detect these security features. So yes, uh, it's it's a big task, but the passport officer that is there um, uh, checking your document has almost all the information uh, uh, around the globe how the uh, uh, passport should look like or your ID document should look like. But yes, there is a kind of um, a gap which comes when you when you go to um, underdeveloped countries until today. Another question from uh, Ayazan Asgalieva. Ayazan. Ayazan, do you uh, us? So. Yes, we can ask to another student. Yes. Um, so we can commute to Maud Swakibka if you have a question to ask speakers. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I want to ask a question that uh, on a few days ago on Research Day, we saw a presentation that how machine learning is used for the for, for laser engraving and color indu induction so is your is your company also uses machine learning for the same purpose um so we so we, we cannot answer it completely uh, because there are few projects which run with such uh, such machine learning and yeah, the after COVID, uh, the, the next future in the next 10 years, I would say, uh, will be a combination of machine learning for uh, plus your laser engraving. 
Yeah. So in, in such a way that uh, you 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 have um, um, something um, related to machine learning in terms of detecting how a person walks, how a person um, is seen, uh, which is which is comparable to your physical uh, features uh, shown in your um, uh, IT document. Another question is that uh, uh, it was mentioned in the presentation that the laser need ten seconds to uh, for one document. So, uh, is it really possible uh, that one document is completely made in ten seconds, or does it take much more time, more time than that? Uh, so it depends upon feature. But if you are talking about black and white feature, yes, yes. Uh, it, is, it takes around ten seconds. Even less. Yeah, even less. That's very impressive. Then, thank you. So yeah, uh, considering about time, there are few features in the market. Um, um, uh, which which consider um, uh, using different type of um, engraving methods. So in such a scenario, you tend to increase the time of the engraving document. But yes, on the other hand, uh, the the security feature is quite ahead of the technology. So this means that you take more time, but you have a nicer security feature. So this can be a possibility. But for black and white document, I think uh, yes, I would say. It takes less than 10 seconds. I can take less than 10 seconds, and also it's a balance that you have to find between, uh, uh, I would say, the, the speed that you want to laser engrave your document, and also the quality, and also the, the different security features that has been to be uh, personalized inside the document. So it's, it's a question of balance, in fact. So okay. is Az Ayazan uh, with us to? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your informative presentation. Uh, and I have a question more about the employment uh, opportunities. Uh, so what are the main like soft and hard skills which are required from uh, employers to, to have opportunity to work in a company? Stefan, would you like to yeah. that? You're talking about the software skill? Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I would say I'm more focused uh, with Nippon. We are more focused about the, the, the ID document, the physical ID document. Uh, but in in this field, uh, we need to have to, we need some uh, people working on the on software in order to enhance security features and all these kind of things. Uh, it's not the only way uh, in order to work with HID because, as I said before, inside the company we have people working on. Uh, on also uh, uh, mobile ID system and all the things that can, I would say, link the different um, product that we have in order to offer the complete solution to our customer. So I'm not, I'm maybe not the right person to ask, ask, think about the software, even if there is uh, some software inside uh, my team, because uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, personalization, is a couple huh, between the machine. Uh, that you are using to make the personalization and the document itself. So you need to have some bridge. You cannot create a document without thinking about uh, which kind of machine will be used to personalize it. Uh, so there is a bridge. But as I said, from my side, uh, I'm really focused on uh, on uh, physical ID. So that means card, passport, uh, data page, and all the components that will be used to create the the, the, doc, the, the ID document uh, more than the, regarding software. So I'm maybe not the right person to give you some indication uh, which kind of skill we are searching now. Uh, but I would say it would be more about uh, how to uh, to enhance uh, image that will be used inside the, the Perso system itself. So. Uh, as in, uh, yeah, your question was more on the how um, uh, HID is looking for like uh, outer people to to be a part of HID, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, is, is there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, uh, as Stefan said, uh, there should be a mix of people uh, working in material science, lasers, um, and uh, and softwares or machine learning. So this is just a small part uh, of the industry, uh, or I would say HID. So 
HIV yeah. is quite big. So we, we are just not looking for people uh, specific to lasers of material science, but also people coming from the background of uh, computer science, artificial intelligence. So uh, a complete a complete skills like these uh, are quite beneficial. And as our colleagues also mentioned that it's quite important to innovate uh, in industry like ID industry, um, because every every six months, uh, the technology changes and you should be open minded um, uh, with, with such a pace um, and you should you should know how to learn and adapt uh, new technologies. Um, so in university, as, as you know, that uh, you don't learn a lot. Um, but uh, such programs like PSRS are quite useful for you guys. Um, so I, I, I congratulate Natalie and the team actually to, to make a bridge between industries and academics because it's a win-win situation for us and you guys because we, we get to know young talents like you uh, who can actually join our companies in the near future. And on the, on the other hand, um, for you, it's, it's much more better to get an overview of industries. Uh, perhaps uh, another question concerning uh, what you mentioned uh, during the talk uh, concerning the this um, difficulty to provide gray levels uh, intermediate gray levels uh, from uh, laser so so the use of uh, software or algorithm uh, approach to to compensate um, do you have uh, today any research uh, on laser so from the photonic side to produce directly these uh, levels. Uh, so I won't be able to say that it's it's being patent. Yes. So, <laughs> okay. Sorry. So, yeah. but, okay but, so you have. This yeah, is yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have. Okay. Okay. It is interesting because um, often we are uh, speaking about coupling technology, software, hardware. Um, but uh, we have also to, to fix what is the midpoint and uh, it's also a part of the, of the success probably. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you so much. You will be there for the roundtable also? Or? Yes. One of you. Okay, yes. good. So we are quite in time, only five minutes late. So uh, we, we save five minutes <laughs> at the end. So uh, let us continue with the next speaker. Uh, perhaps you can. Okay. Yeah, Thierry, I'm I'm here. I will. Uh... Thank you, Amin. Yeah, thank you, uh, Thierry. So, okay. Um, the next presentation concerns uh, will be presented by Juicy Hiltunen, who is a research professor uh, at VTT Technical Research.